Hey, good evening. Thank you and welcome for tuning in tonight. Let me begin with a question, all right? Do you have trouble sleeping at night? Is it things that are bothering you, which keep you awake, wandering and running off in all different kinds of scenarios in your mind? Well, if that's so, then I have some hope for you. I have some help for you this evening. And you should take to heart what God's word says. And if you take to heart what God's word says, you will sleep better. Your mind will calm down. Your heart rate will slow down. And you will find peace. How would you like some peace? I like peace very much. All right. Well, let's listen then to what the Prince of Peace has to say to us. We're going to go in a moment to Mark 13. So you can go ahead and open your Bible, if you would, to Mark chapter 13. There we go. In Mark 13, Jesus is telling his disciples of the troubles that are going on all around. And as you read through that, man, it seems like Jesus is sitting right here next to us in January 20, 2021. There are troubles worldwide. There are troubles nationwide here in our country, as well as most everywhere else. There are troubles citywide. And there are troubles even in our neighborhoods. Now, whatever picture of life that you have, Jesus lets us know here in Mark chapter 13 that life is not all ice cream and apple pie. And for those who are from Vermont, uh, we found out apple pie with a slice of sharp cheddar cheese on top. Now, for those of you who are not from Vermont, don't knock it till you try it. It's pretty good. In Mark 13, Jesus was having a small group meeting with Peter, James, John, and Andrew. He gave his disciples some good advice. So I want to pass this advice on to you so you'll know what to do and what not to do. Some of us, when we read here in a moment from Mark 13, what Jesus says, it will be nothing new. To others, it may reveal something that we have overlooked or we may have forgotten about, or it may just be totally brand new to you. Either way, these are good insights and they are a good reminder, or it's a heads up. And often it's all three of those. Here's what Jesus told his four friends in their small group meeting. Mark chapter 13 and verse number five. And Jesus answering them began to say, take heed that no one deceives you. All right. Take heed, he said. That's our first point tonight. Take heed. That means look away from. It means beware. I believe that a lot of our troubles come from our looking into things and thinking upon things and focusing on things we need not to look at, think upon, and focus upon. As we look into those kind of things, we are not looking unto the one who is our help. We're not looking unto the one who is our shield and our buckler. 
by looking into those things, we are not looking to the one whom is our strength and our very present help in time of trouble. And as we focus on things we ought not to be focusing on, and not necessarily sinful things, we're focusing on things we ought not to be focusing on at that moment. We should be focusing on Jesus, but instead we're focusing on this thing here. That focus leads to our being deceived. It leads to our deception because our minds and our emotions are not properly prepared by God's word. We get ourselves into a fog. And you know as well as I do, when you get into a fog, you can't see clearly. Physically as well as spiritually. You get into a fog, you can't see clearly. You can't think clearly when your mind's not focused properly. So we don't act properly. We become misguided, deceived, Jesus told us there. Often, we're, we're deceived by our own mental and imaginary inventions because we're not focused on the Lord. Take heed, Jesus said. Look away from those things. Beware those things. You do not need to be in that type environment. It is okay to not put all your focus on what is going on around you. It's okay. But to do that, it requires a choice. If you want to pull your head up out of the pit of deception, it requires a decision on your part. Do I keep going down the drain or do I pull my head up and put it where it belongs? Again, Jesus said, take no heed that no one deceives you. And to that, Brit adds, no one, not even yourself. And friends, I believe we are more often than not our biggest deceivers. We deceive ourselves because we have the wrong focus. And Jesus saying, take heed, is, is not the only caution that he gives here. He says that no one deceives you. One of the greatest ways to prevent deception, to prevent allowing yourself to be deceived, is know the facts. Avoid the rumors. Resist the temptation. And that comes in many shapes, many sizes, many opportunities. Now, a little illustration. Maybe humorous, maybe not. It's up to you. If someone tries to sell you the fastest dog on earth, I mean, they have a story all built up how this dog will make you rich. And you can buy this dog Today, for only $29.99, today only, for $29.99, and you buy this dog sight unseen, only to find out he is a two-legged dog. Guess what? You were taken. You were deceived. You let yourself be deceived. You did not know the facts about the wonder dog. And now you are full of wonder, aren't you? I wonder if I can get my money back. Well, I wonder how many other people he ripped off. I wonder 
What am I going to do with this two-legged dog? On the thought of deception and not letting anyone deceive you, as Jesus said, just because someone says it is so does not mean it is so. <laughs> you, you, need to, you need to believe that. Just because someone says it is not, uh, they say it is so, does not mean that that is all there is to it. Usually there is more, but they're not going to tell you. Too much of what goes on and what has been going around has been added to by this person, that person, the other person, before you hear it. Friends, I'm simply saying right here and right now, get your facts from a reliable source, not just someone offering you something, nor from someone telling you what you think you want to hear. Just because they say so on Facebook or on Google or on Twitter or on Instagram or on whatever does not mean it is the truth. Whatever it is that concerns you, find out from God's word what God has to say. God will say something in a direct, specific, in a principle, Sometimes an example. God's word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path, says Psalm 119, verse 105. It's there to direct us. It's there to show us the way to go and therefore showing us where not to go. If God's word says to go this way, it means you don't go that way and you don't go that way and you don't go that way. You go that way. God does not want you in the dark, friend. God does not want you in deception. He wants you in the light. So do as 1 John 1, 7 says, Walk in the light as he is in the light. Take heed that no one deceives you. Don't let others deceive you. Not even yourself. All right, next, Jesus directs his four friends. Uh, Mark chapter 13, look at verse number nine. But watch out for yourselves, for they will deliver you up to councils, and you will be beaten in the synagogues. You will be brought before rulers and kings for my sake, for a testimony to them. Trouble is coming. Whether you want to hear that or not, trouble is coming. It is always going to be this way for Christians, for Christ followers, for God followers, the one true God. So Jesus said, watch out for yourselves. You know why there's always going to be trouble for true God followers, for disciples of Jesus Christ? That is because evil hates righteousness. It has always been that way. It will always be that way. I thank God for the times that, that we have uh, good times and great times, but it's not always that way. Evil hates righteousness. And friends, evil has hated righteousness from the very beginning. You go back into Genesis chapter two and chapter three and read on from the garden of Eden onward until today, evil hates righteousness. That's why 
trouble is coming. And that's why it's always going to be that way for Christians. Nothing has changed there. But what can change, dear friend, is this. Don't let anyone deceive you. Don't be gullible. There are those in our world, in our own country, in our own state, in our own city, in our own neighborhood, who prey on people who do not watch out for themselves or who do not take heed, as Jesus is telling us. I want you to be wise, and God even more so, wants you to be a wise person. Don't follow the crowd just because it seems as if everybody's doing it. And just because it seems that what they're doing sounds good to me, that's not reason to do it. That's not reason to jump in. That's not reason to become a part of it. Jesus told us to know the truth. He said that in John chapter 8, verse 32. And you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. The truth will make you free from deception. Friends, knowing the truth will make you free from deception. It will make you free from traps. It'll keep you from falling in. It'll keep you from getting suckered into something you have no reason being in. Know the facts and be gracious as you look into the facts and keep your guard up. God's word, following the principles of God's word is your guard. You don't follow the principles of God's word. You're letting your guard down, friend. And you let your guard down, you're going to get clobbered. But if you will follow the principles of God's word, you will come out better. Now, Jesus went on to say in his small group meeting with Peter, James, John, and Andrew, you're in Mark chapter 13, I hope. Look now at verse number 11 and follow along with me as I read. But when they arrest you and deliver you up, do not worry beforehand or premeditate what you will speak. But whatever is given you in that hour, speak that. For it is not you who speak, but the Holy Spirit. Jesus is giving us his own personal experience of listening to the Holy Spirit for the right response. He is telling you and me and all his followers, listen to the Holy Spirit for the right response to people. Our tendency is to speak out of fear, out of emotion, uh, out, of, out of anger, uh, uh, eagerness, uh, to name a few. This is not Jesus's way. He said, listen for the Holy Spirit to give you the right response. Listen for the voice of the Holy Spirit. Why? He knows what we do not know. He will speak to you what to say, and sometimes as important, and maybe even more important, what not to say. You may want to come up with a quick retort, and the Holy Spirit will say, zip your lip, kid. Be quiet. Don't say that. Uh-uh. Nope. Don't do it. Don't say it. We better listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit, lest we find ourselves 
deceived and getting ourselves in unnecessary trouble. The Holy Spirit will tell us what to say and what not to say. God says it this way, and this may be helpful to some of you. I like this in, in uh, Isaiah chapter 30. If you would, go to Isaiah chapter 30. Keep your, your uh, finger or your mark there in uh, Mark 13. Isaiah chapter 30 and verse 21. God says, your ears shall hear a word behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. Whenever you turn to the right hand or whenever you turn to the left. Here we are going through life. Something happens. We want to turn to the right. The Holy Spirit will say, do this. Or something um, might accost us. And we think the correct response is to do this. And the Holy Spirit will say, do this over here instead. We need to listen. The Holy Spirit will give you the guidance you need, which it can be a yes or it can be a no. But it will be what you need for godly living and for godly acting in an ungodly world among an ungodly environment. That's a lot of ungodliness going on around us. But we are to be the light of the world. A city set on a hill that cannot be hidden. So we need to know what to say, what not to say, what to do, what not to do. We need to learn to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit, not to your emotions, not to your fears, but to the voice of the Holy Spirit of God. Our final directive tonight from Jesus and again, he's in his small group meeting with his four friends in Mark chapter 13. Look at verse 13. You will be hated by all for my name's sake. Like I said earlier, life is not all ice cream and apple pie. You will be hated by all for my name's sake. But he who endures to the end shall be saved, Jesus said. If you will trust God at his word, that's a big if. Yet is it if you can accomplish. If you will trust God, at his word, and take heed, right? That's what we've been talking about. It's taking heed. Let no one deceive you. Watch out for yourselves and listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. You will endure to the end. You're not going to bomb out halfway through. You will endure to the end. You're not going to give up at the first step. Now, he, he's not saying that we won't feel like it because we have to deal with our flesh. But Jesus tells us, to take heed, let no one deceive you, watch out, listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit, and if we do those things, you will endure to the end. Life is going to be difficult. It's going to be. At times, it will be almost intolerable. Since it's going to be that way, Jesus, we just read, we will be hated by all people, not some, not most, all. Because it is 
to be that way, follow Jesus' advice. Take heed. Let no one deceive you. Watch out for yourself. Listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit, and you will endure to the end. And those who endure, here is here's the crown jewel. Those who endure to the end will be saved. Friends, you will never go wrong by trusting the Lord with all your heart and not leaning on your own understanding and instead lean on his understanding. He has good plans for you. He has plans for a future for you and for hope for you. Trust him all the way through. Not part of the way. Make up your mind. I am going to trust God all the way, no matter how difficult it gets. And don't stop when it gets rough. He will take care of you. You will endure. And those who endure, and that word endure in the Greek means stand their ground to the end. Those who stand their ground to the end shall be saved, shall be rescued, shall be restored. God gave Peter, James, John, and Andrew, God in the flesh, Jesus, some excellent advice for godly living in an ungodly world. God will take care of you no matter how difficult life becomes. Trust what he says. What does he say to do? Quick review one more time. Take heed to yourselves. Let no one deceive you, not even yourself. You need to know this word to do that. Watch out. For yourselves. How? Know what this word tells me to do. Listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. And you will endure to the end. You will stand your ground to the end. And you will be rescued. You will be restored. Jesus said. He'll take care of you no matter how difficult life becomes, he will see you through. So take heed, friends. Let's ask him for help, shall we? Holy God, thank you so much for your powerful word. Thank you for having that small group meeting with Peter, James, John, and Andrew, and allowing us to know the same wisdom and direction that you gave them for godly living in an ungodly world. May we take to heart the truths you gave them. May we read it as if you were speaking to us as well, for you are. Lord, help us. Help us to be willing to follow you, to trust what you say, Lord, and to take heed and to let no one deceive us, not even ourselves, and and help us to, to watch out, be on the alert, be on the lookout, be on guard, and to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. And may we believe your word that we will endure to the end and be saved. Thank you for the assurance you give us. Thank you for the confidence we have that we can endure to the end and overcome. 
and be saved. Thank you. Amen. Amen. All right. I appreciate you being here with us tonight. I appreciate you giving a, an ear to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to us, church. And you take these truths and you use them. Be godly in our ungodly world. And come to church Sunday, 1030. We'd love to have you with us. God bless you. We'll see you then.